And this is Jonelle. Um, we'll be going over SACE page by page. And for this video, we will be going over the info and eligibility page, which is the first page of your IEP. So as you see here, uh, we'll be working with a mock student by the name of Sarah Brown. Uh, the first thing on this page you're going to see is the IEP date. You want to make sure that you are changing this date to the date that you are actually having the IEP. So for us, we'll be having it on September 10th, 2020. And our next date, our next annual, is going to be the anniversary date, which is exactly one year, so 9-10-2021. You'll see that the original SPED entry date is grayed out, and then when you roll over it, there's a circle, which means you cannot adjust this once the original special ed entry date is inputted at the initial, you can no longer adjust that. Um, you'll also see the last evaluation date. For the purpose of this video, uh, this IEP is going to be an annual and a triennial as well as a transition. So this being a triennial, the last evaluation date will also be today, 9-10-2020. And our next evaluation every three years, so it's going to be a three-year anniversary date of 9-10-2023. Again, you're going to make sure that you are indicating which IEP you're going to have. Not every IEP is going to be an annual and a tri, but for this video, we will be doing an annual and a triennial as well as a transition since our student is 15 and a half years old and will be turning 16 by the time her next annual comes up. So we'll be doing an ITP as well. All right. Please do not use the calculate next date or calculate last date buttons. It does not give us a year anniversary dates up here. So please do the calculations for the dates of the next annual and next evaluation, last evaluation on your own. So as you can see, um, it provides her age. Anything, again, that's grayed out is not anything that you'll be able to adjust. Um, the student is in 10th grade. Um, you want to make sure that you have their native language, um, whether or not they're an English language learner. Have they been redesignated? Do they need an interpreter? And you're going to find this information through your district's uh, student information system. Currently, we are using Illuminate. Um, just make sure that you're checking in on that information uh, through your student system. Next, you're going to find the parent and guardian um, demographic information. So please make sure that you are checking these for accuracy both prior to the IEP as well as when you have the IEP. Um, make sure that if there are changes that are being made that aside from you making the corrections here on SACE, you're going to want to make sure to let your um, attendance clerk or your secretary or your registrar um, adjust these in the student system as well. When these SACE and the student information system read one another, uh, it usually happens that Illuminate will override the information. So make sure that your adjustments or clarif uh, clarifications, corrections within this demographic um, information, address, phone number, email, is made on SACE as well as in the student information system. All right. If you look down here in this area, again, something that's grayed out, you're not going to be able to adjust that. Um, it's something most of our students here have identified um, through Fremont Unified School District, so don't worry about that. It's already going to be hard-coded in there. Your resident school will always be the school that is your student's home school. So you want to check with either your secretary or um, get this information from, again, your student information system for now. It is Illuminate with us. So check that out to make sure that the home address that they reside at is also reflective of the resident's school. The information in regards to ethnicity and race can all be found via your student information system, again, which is Illuminate for us currently. If you scroll down 
to indicate the disability or disabilities. Um, we are looking here at primary disability as well as secondary disability. Um, this is something you're going to be addressing at initial IEPs and triennial IEPs in collaboration with a school psychologist and the entire team. Um, please don't change these um, on your own or without collaboration or connection with the IEP team. Uh, these should only be adjusted at the annual and, I'm sorry, at the initial and the triennial IEPs. So make sure that you are able to connect with your team. And if you click on this, there'll be a drop down menu. Um, anything with an asterisk, as you can see, are going to be low incidence disabilities, just so that you are aware. So for the purpose of this video, our student has a primary disability of SLD and actually no um, secondary disability. The two buttons right here are check off boxes. Note, um, not eligible for special education. That will only be marked if this is an initial IEP and the student does not qualify. Uh, exiting from, from special education means that they're returning to general education and they're no longer eligible. That means at some point the student had an IEP, we've tested them out and they no longer qualify. If this is the case and they no longer qualify for any type of special education services, you wanna make sure that you're checking off this box, but you are still leaving the disability on there. Do not take the disability off if you are exiting them from special education. Um, Going back to the primary and the secondary disabilities, um, just remember there are 13 disability categories for ages six and up, and one additional category for students that are six and under. This can all be discussed with your school psychologist. In this area right here, describe students how the student's disability affects involvement and progress in general education. This, you really want to make sure um, that you're explaining how the student's disability adversely affects education. You want to leave this um, from year to year, but make sure that you're collaborating with your school psychologist because this should be updated as um, the student's triennial is being updated as well. When we scroll down to initial placements only, the question right here that says, has the student received IDEA coordinated early intervention services using 15% of IDEA funding in the past two years? Just make sure that if you come from a school that has a strong MTSS model, you wanna make sure to talk to your administrators to determine if your school receives funding. If not, you're going to mark no. If they are receiving, um, 15% of IDEA funding, then you can go ahead and mark yes. But for a majority of them, we will be marking no. Uh, this information down here in the red, the date and information should align with your initial referral documents. And this should also be completed by the case manager at the initial and a 30 day if they are coming from outside of the SELPA. Okay, hopefully this helped with the info and eligibility page.